Hello everyone, I've decided to terraform, I mean transform, an entire plains village, and this is how to end. Minecraft villages are one of the oldest structures in the game, and even though they had their fair share of updates, they still look painfully plain. And generation is kinda questionable. So, to give the villagers the love they deserve, I chose the best seed I could find and got to work. And mind you, this is my first ever big project and I was very intimidated at first, so I wanted to start with something small. And this village already had a marketplace, so I thought, why not start there? It would only need a bit of terraforming, and let me tell you, by the end of this project, I will place 15,000 blocks of dirt, which is insane in my opinion. I used tons of different decorations to give each tall a unique look and build a well in the middle to put it all together, which brings us to the point that it looked empty, so I decided to tackle the church next. But it's really not something you build every day, so I had to plan it out in my creative world. My first attempt was atrocious, but you only fail if you don't try hard enough. So the second time, it was a success. Another thing that made the build more complicated than it had to be is the small scale. And all due to the fact that the island I chose for transformation did not have a tons of space, so we had to work around it. And of course, the cemetery was a must. And I feel like now it's a perfect time to introduce you to my wanted list. Which is a place where I cross out all the villagers that I have built the profession house for. Or maybe when I'm just done with them. <laughs> All of that was done in the same day and I was already kinda tired, so I decided to reuse the design I already had, but with the minor tweaks. Plains village means no deep slate, must have an oak roof with a spruce trim and other things. And now I kinda wish I had more pre-built designs for this project. And I keep mentioning some rules, so let's go over them real quick. I have to stick to the original scale, use a plains village building palette, all decorations have to have purpose, and everything you see has to be pretty. Which will mean a lot of terraforming later on. The second day of building was going great. Stonemason's house is one of those houses which is not as hard as building something like a church, but not as easy as a regular villager houses. It really gave me that amount of challenge I needed to start my very long building session that day. As for details, a few stone piles in the yard and a cutting station on the left really did the trick here. And that little house behind it really needed my help, but we had to relocate it as everything in this village, I did not like the way it was. Finally, the library got very much needed decoration that I conveniently left out last time I was building. And then I got beaten up by this little pig pen. All the piggies decided to escape and disturb our local villagers. And most importantly, me. And then I had an idea. This is supposed to be an island, but it's very far from it for now. What can be a better way to express your frustration if not blowing up things with TNT? And destroying only one house in the process? I call it a success. Well, my OCD couldn't handle destroyed terrain any longer, so I had to set my priorities straight, which in my case meant fixing up the terrain to some extent and getting sidetracked with building a bridge, which was not the end of my procrastination that day. As I said earlier, I went into this project with very poor planning, and instead of doing the responsible thing and maybe getting on those villager profession houses I needed to build, I decided to build not a farmer house, not a fishing house, but something. And that wasn't enough, so then I got completely sidetracked and decided to build a waterfall. Honestly, I should have called this video Shara's attempt to build a village while she's getting sidetracked. In my opinion, that place just had to have a waterfall. And let's just ignore the fact that I got completely beaten up by water physics in Minecraft. And here I am building an inn from a house, so we are much closer to building villager profession houses than we have ever been as of lately. This was one of the few houses I didn't have to demolish in order to make it look good. As for the marketplace, I thought it would be really cute to build a few stalls here. And now that I've run out of all the other things to do, it was a time to face my problems head on and finally get to the real work. See, up to this point, I have successfully avoided building any kind of forges in any of my builds. And here, I had to build three, and this was the first one. It doesn't look like it, but I've spent 40 minutes trying to build that chimney forge thing. And in the end, I also built a pumpkin patch, and then I started messing with this window, which was completely fine before, but now it's kinda weird. But it was really good to know I was making progress, and with weaponsmith out of the way, I finally could get to something very exciting. The Fletcher house is one of 
the funnest houses to make. To keep it on the simpler side, I just built a tower on top, little workshop on the right side, and on the left side, I thought, why not make a wood storage? They had to make the house out of something, right? And now you finally get to see the best part, the target practice. And details like that is what exactly makes the village feel so believable, with its own lore, people, and history. And from all 24 times when replay mode crashed on me, only this one didn't save. The tower is cute though. And now when the right side of the island was done, it was time to get to the left. And as usual, I decided to start with something simple. The small house number 3 is the cutest, tiniest cottage on the whole island. And we are currently in 15 hour mark of the whole building process. And completing the whole right side of the village really gave me the confidence that I can actually finish this thing. And for this one, you might say, sure. This is not a shepherd house. And I can say, well, I know, but now it's kinda is. There is just one piece of information I kinda missed. This village did not have anywhere enough houses for my transformation. So I kinda had to copy a few in, or maybe not a few. Which brings us to a point that I copied the wrong house and that was supposed to be a stable. And now it would be really logical to just continue as we go, but this exact spot gives me insane anxiety. So how about we go to the other side? And here, According to the list, we have quite a few choices, but I decided to go with the armorer. Starting off with terraforming, I later realized that I had to build another forge, but practicing did make perfect and the second attempt was much easier than the first one. This house turned out very luxurious for some reason. You see, the armorer even has his own stall in the marketplace, so I guess that makes sense. And on the left side, I decided to build a small target practice, which would come in handy if you were to test out your product before purchase. Now, when the armorer is done, that leaves us with about 5 houses left. And to be honest, being so inexperienced with big projects, I was kind of burning out at this point. The village seemed to never end and there were so many houses left. In that time, I also caught a cold and got really, really sick, which greatly postponed the release of this video. Hey, but even bad things don't last forever and after the break, felt so much better. And the tender house got some extra decorations to show the tanning process. And if you like details like that, definitely go to my Instagram where I have more than 100 posts on how to detail your house and environment. A few final touches here and now we need to move on to the cartographer. And this village did not have a cartographer, but the original design is no more than a basic house with a few decorations on top, so that's exactly what I did. Basic house with a bit of decorations on top. But I still took my time to detail the environment like the marketplace and building a cart there or a little pumpkin patch right next to the house. And I know I know, another small house, but bear with me, we're about to build a fishing house. And there's just something about building a fishing docks or a fishery that just makes my heart melt. It probably has something to do with the scale, the boats are so tiny, the fish swim in funky ways, and docks itself is such a cute detail that makes any build better. But I don't know, what do you think? By the way, definitely let me know what's your favorite villager profession house. And now we come to the point where I have to address this spot in the village. And I still didn't want to do it. And it's not like I'm trying to hide my procrastination by terraforming, even though that's partially true. We still had to address how ugly that part of the terrain was. So I thought the village is made of wood and that wood must have come from somewhere. So making a lumberjack house seemed like a logical solution. And now I don't know if my wood cutting contraption makes any sense, but it did to me in the moment, even though I have no idea how that would work. You would be surprised that planting trees is the biggest building hack ever. So if you struggle with empty space, now you know what to do. And before we deal with that cursed place, this video took me more than 80 hours to make, so please leave a like to support me and let the video spread to more people. I would really appreciate it. Well, there is no turning back now. And that was the only space I had for a toolsmith, which turned out quite fine in my opinion. I had really tried to stick to the original design and the forge thing, well, now it's just so easy. After that, I had a very awkward amount of space left. It was way too small for a village or profession house. That's why I had to improvise and move a small house from before to fill in the space. And the villagers, of course, had to have their own farming places. So I built two little farms on left and right and a small piggy pen in the back. And this time, no escape. And don't turn off the video just yet, we have two more houses to go and I have just the place for them. But for now, look how beautiful this village is. I'm so proud of it. And the place in question is right across the river and I have such great plans for it. But first we have to transform this butcher house. And that was one of those true transformations. I played around with all the blocks, color palette, but I really tried to keep the house the exact same. And the right side gave me some troubles, but about the left one, whether I've lost it or not, I'll let you draw your own conclusion. 
and that butcher had a lot of strawberry jam on the ground. But enough of this insanity, the farmer house I'm about to build is the one I already had the tutorial for, which once again made my job very easy and I was so grateful for that. And if you're wondering whether I'm going to make tutorials for all the houses made in this video, the answer is yes, but it's gonna take some time. And of course, no village is complete without the fields and I kinda regret this one. Because even in creative mode, plenty of fields by hand is such a tedious, unforgiving job. So I kinda wish my world edit knowledge would go past copy-paste command. Which is probably my own fault, but I'm still gonna complain about it. And in my opinion, decorations are the seasonings of the build. And of course, you can eat your dish without them, but doesn't it just taste better if you do? So I had to go ahead and decorate the whole field, putting a bunch of bushes, barrels, flowers, hay bales, just anything that comes to mind. So, if there is one piece of advice I can give you, don't neglect the decorations. In the end, it's all totally worth it. I hope you can learn from my mistakes and have a better time transforming your own village. By the way, if you want to support my work and get the world download for this village, go check out my Patreon, where you can also find downloads for my tutorial builds and other fun stuff. Well, it's finally time, let's see the before and after. And thank you so much for watching. Bye!